Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's Off Meta build, we have a highly underappreciated exotic perk that I haven't heard much talk about since its release and buff, and that is the Aeon Soul of Force. The Aeon Souls is a unique exotic that has three perks for the user to select with different effects. The most common trait used is the Sect of Insight, where users upon finishers can generate heavy ammo for their team. However, a sect of force is slept on for generally how good it is and I want to show you why it's worth its weight in gold. 50% grenade and mini energy with 10% super energy for teammates that can be procced every 4 seconds is quite interesting and with the right setup, you can pull up some fun styles and support not seen with other exotics. To start, you're going to want to have touch of flames so that fusion grenades can explode twice. Then you want heat rises where you can use your weapons and abilities while gliding in the air. While airborne and have heat rises active, getting a kill will grant you melee energy. The warlock aspect section doesn't offer a lot to the user until you hit the fragment section. Luckily, the touch of flame is really the main aspect you want for this setup, since at least it's giving you a benefit that won't result in death easily. Looking into the fragments, we have Ember or Imperium, where solo weapons or abilities final blows will extend the duration of raging and restoration. Ember of Searing, where defeating Scorched targets grant melee energy and creates fire sprites. Ember of Torches, where powered melee attacks against targets makes you and allies radiant. And Ember of Solace, where Radiant Restoration effects applied to you last longer. Applying Radiant for us on our team plays quite a big benefit with being a team supporter with everyone involved. And personally, with how often we can trigger it, this will make certain tough enemies less of an obstacle over time. Investing like I've done is the best way through this, as if you like, you can add on the Ember of Benevolence, which will reward us for doing the right thing. Although, I chose not to use it this time because of the risk included when using this in GM environments. If you're using a weapon that triggers Ignition Blast consistently, and you want to at least use your Scorch effects more often, then swapping out Imperium for Ember of Ashes will be the right call if you see the following isn't that much help. For the mods and stats section, you only need two areas to cover, which is the Discipline and Strength section. A discipline at tier 7 from the focus is going to give us a tier 10 stat with a 37 second cooldown rate when using fusion grenades with the build. This is very fast and surprisingly good with how touch of flame will enhance our fusion grenades to do more. Ideally with this level of regen, it will mean that our super choice can come back much faster when applying the ashes as its mod. Also, having the firepower mod will greatly benefit from this as we can produce fast orbs of power that can be used to boost our super regen rate but also giving us a armor charge to enhance our time based abilities. Strength we have ours at tier 7 as well with the font of Viker mod for a tier 10 stat with a 42 second cooldown rate when using incinerate snap. This as well is greatly beneficial as it means that we can proc our radiant effect more often over a long period. However, applying ember of searing and polaris lance precision hits for scorch build up would actually push the stat down to around a 30 second instead if everything is activated at the right time. With how effective this is, you can mix and match certain mods via the discipline side of things if you prefer more of a close range approach. However you decide, both of the two key areas have reached their given role and should allow players to play offensive and defensive as please. For armor charges, we have charged up which is going to give you that extra plus one of armor charge once active. After that, adding on the Solar Cypher mod, Fire Power, and the Reaper mod will help with creating orbs of power as we go along, with a powerful attraction making it easier to gather orbs that are left around. Adding on a times 2 Solar Weapon Surge mod so that our Solar Weapons can get a 17% damage buff is also beneficial in the long run, with Time Dilation mod increasing the duration of our armor charges and other self buffs applied. Lastly, the Powerful Fence mod will make sure that once you get an orb of power, your teammates also get one as well. Now lastly, weapons being used will vary as this will depend on what weapons can stun champions the best. Polaris Lance is one of them, as it can stun overload champions via the seasonal anti-mod, but also being able to stun barriers with raging on and stun unstoppables when the ignitions are propped. This is ideal as it covers all the key things needed to stun all three champions with ease, and thus provides a good choice of activating our Aeon gloves more often. At the same time, Polaris is highly underrated with how powerful its built up damage is, and with the added bonus of Scorching Ignition, it makes the weapon a perfect mini boss to boss dealer without needing to use your heavy at times. Oddly, 
I also recommend you use the Wicked Implement because of its near similar effect it can provide towards key targets, with its freeze capabilities being the big one. From here, I would then advise you to pick a silver weapon with incandescent on it if you want to spam Scorch or Ignition Burns more easier. However, this is down to the user and is not highly needed considering that the strength of the build is already there. I personally have the Apex Predator with Vorpal and Reconstruction, which is perfect to use against bosses and are highly effective at taking out key priority targets there and then, such as mini bosses, tormentors, and champions alike. Now, when you hear players talk about using Aeon Soul for endgame, 9 times out of 10, they tend to be talking about Sect of Insight that allows players to create heavy on ultra to mini bosses you finish. This is where the Zotic has seen the most usage when being used in endgame content, where heavy drops are needed for certain encounters. However, outside of this heavy use, players tend to avoid the other insights offered, which can be very useful depending on how you build into them. A sector force, in our case, allows teammates to get a 50% grenade and melee energy regen if we, personally, stun champions and mini bosses or outright kill bosses. Teammates that are within 30 meters of us also get a 10% super energy on top of that extra energy given, and all of this is on a 4 second cooldown rate. Now applying this with a solo warlock allows us to extend this feature further, as we can add on the Radiant effect to buff others and use our Well of Radiance to enhance our team damage and health for when we really need to become unstoppable. And this is just the icing on the cake as we can customize our weapons, mods and fragments to further make it truly supportive build and name if we desired. However, I chose to invest 50-50 as I wanted my chosen exotic to not only be useful against mini bosses with stunning, but also be useful with dealing with consistent damage that won't need heavy ammo to be involved all the time. With this, you can consistently buff teammates to have more damage and fast ability energy without the need of exotic boost and effects as long as you are the main primer when dealing with champions and mini bosses. Do I see this sort of build becoming popular for endgame content now with how things have rapidly changed in terms of build crafting? No. And I only say that because of how long it takes players to try something new out that is generally different and fun. The vast majority of the community want to use meta items so that they can get through content fast and efficiently, which is understandable. But if you told a player to use other sects on Aeon Souls for even more effective team support, most players will look at you with shock with asking such a question. It's easy for me to show you how to effectively use the other forms of sect of Aeons without needing to use meta items, but that's based on my level of skill. This is not the case for other players, and although this optic is good when propped, it's not something game changing compared to our near infinite heavy on demand. Aeon Souls are in a good spot, and Sector Force is also good when you are playing any sort of supportive build you have in mind, as its ability to be used in any subclass choice allows players to customize to their liking. I hope that what I've shown has pushed you to try and test them out to just see how much better they are now than before, as honestly, they do a good job. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, but at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub out here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, I've got more stuff like this than I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.